when Scouted 4 actually uploads a video. Here and welcome to another episode of Cubic Wings. In this episode, we have the 737-900 and the 737-900ER. So let's get right into it. Here is just the base livery with the 737-900ER. Looks very nice. It's very, pretty much just an extended version of the 737-800 with an extra emergency exit. The extra emergency exit near the end of the aircraft. Here we have a split scimitar wingtip on either side, very nice, SATCOM antenna, airfoil extensions, stabilizer trim, horizontal stabilizer as well as the vertical stabilizer. It, it's pretty much exactly the same as the 737-800, it's just longer with an extra emergency exit. And the 737-900 is literally just longer than the 737-800. So, uh, this is the tinted, this is the tinted, this is the tinted, this is the default without any livery on it. So we have the yoke, we have the uh, throttle quadrant, this light, this lever here turns on and off the landing lights, overhead panel as well as the real landing lights here. So that's literally it, I may as well just go show you guys through the, oh, the rest of the aircraft, yeah. So, liveries now. First livery we have is the 737-900 house livery for Boeing. Very nice, it says Boeing 737-900 on the side. And yeah, I was debating whether or not to keep this white line here because I kind of thought it was a bit intrusive. But it is on the real livery, however it's really thin. There are two, I believe, white lines, I can't remember exactly. And it didn't look quite right, but I decided to keep it just, you know, otherwise it wouldn't look as much like the real thing. So I've just, yeah, I've just kept it. It says 737 on the tail. I'm pretty happy with how that text turned out. Turned out but. Overall, this livery was a little bit disappointing. I thought it would be a little bit better than it was, but it wasn't. However, the fact I, I just love 737-900s without winglets. It's the best thing. I think it looks great. Yeah, that's the Boeing house livery. This doesn't have an interior just because it's a house livery. Next up, we have the United 737-900ER with a SATCOM antenna and split scimitar wingtips. Very nice, very nice livery. We've got the globe there and it says United on the side. Also, we've got a different shade of gray at the bottom here. I'm pretty sure that's just because they didn't paint that section, they just left it, left it bare metal. Very interesting how United do that, I'm not sure why, it's probably either to save costs or weight, something like that. But on the interior, to your left we have a lavatory, to your right we have a galley, over here is also a galley as well as a crew seat and then another little galley. Then we have first class or business class, we also have the sky interior here, so we've got the nice lighting. Then on the first thing you'll see is the lavatory when you go into the economy area. So we've got a lavatory at the front and then we have economy all the way back to two lavatories and then a galley. So that is the interior for United 737-900ER. It's also got the American flag just beneath. Okay. Okay. It's also got the American flag just there. Very nice plane. Yet another 737 without winglets and I absolutely love this. This is the 737-900KLM. Very beautiful aircraft in real life, very beautiful livery. I really like how this looks. It says KLM on the side there and also KLM on the tail. Very nice, from far away, without winglets, this aircraft looks just really nice, so. Very happy with how this livery's turned out. It's the older livery, unlike the 737-800 last episode, I'm um, not last episode, the first episode, which was a the newer livery for uh, KLM. And also this has an actual interior as well. To your left, we've got lavatory, we have galley, galley crew seat, and another galley, a lot of galleys. Then we have the Europe business, I believe it's called. It's like European business, maybe. I'm not sure the exact name of it, but here it is. Then we've got the divider, and then we just have economy all the way to the back of the aircraft, where there are two lavatories, and then another galley. So that's the interior for KLM. Okay, I keep teleporting myself with the compass. All right, over here, now we have Delta, and this has been in every single episode so far, so I'm pretty sure you guys are relatively familiar with the interior, but I'll go through it anyway. So this is Split Scimitars, it's got itself a SATCOM antenna, American flag as well as the registration. It's got Delta on the side, Delta Widget, I think it's called. Blue engine, very nice. Blue underbelly. Yeah, so that's the exterior for Delta, now it's gone to the interior. To your left, we have once again a lavatory, then we have nothing here, and then two galleys and a crew seat. Well, one galley when you think about it, but yeah. Then we have Delta's first class, or whatever it's called, not actually sure. They, every single airline is different, they make it all fancy. Then we have Delta Comfort Plus, followed just by economy all the way back, as well as the sky interior. We have three lavatories at the end of this aircraft, two on the left side and 
one on the right side. Very nice. Then we have a galley as well as a crew seat. So that's the interior for the Delta 737-900ER. Very nice. Here is possibly my favorite ever livery for any aircraft ever. This is the new Alaskan Airlines 737-900ER with the new livery. Very nice indeed. Love this livery. It's got a split of our wingtips and it's got the new... I just love the color scheme. It's very nice. Got the Eskimo on the tail. And yeah, I mean, not much to say about it. It's very nice. We have the American flag and the registration. It says Alaska on the very side of the aircraft. Pedo tubes, I forgot to mention that in the default one. Yeah, very nice. All right, let's go on the interior. Also, look at the gray underbelly. Now on the interior, to your left, lavatory. To your right is a closet, and then we have a crew seat and then a galley. Then we have first class, whatever, um, you know, whatever Alaskan calls it. And then we have the sky interior as well, and economy all the way back. To once again, three lavatories and a galley. So that's the Alaskan 737-900. Once again, this livery, I just love it. It's a really good livery. Okay, I keep teleporting myself. Oh my god. This is another great livery. This is the Korean Air 737-900 without winglets again. Once again, I love aircraft that don't have winglets. I mean, I have nothing against winglets or split scimitars. I think they look awesome. But something about the look of a 737 without winglets is just so cool. Love the wing views with it. But yeah, so this is it, 737-900 Korean Air, it's got the Pepsi looking logo on the tail, although it's not Pepsi, I know that, but still, and it says Korean Air on the side with once again that logo for the O. On the interior, we have a, a lavatory, galley, and crew seat, and we have the first class, followed by economy, I'll show you the first class, I didn't really show it, but not well, here's first class, followed by economy all the way back, to two lavatories and a galley. Very nice plane, beautiful livery. I'll show you guys from this angle. From far away, this, this looks. I love this livery. Very nice. Okay, I don't know why. I just don't learn, do I? I keep teleporting myself. Here is possibly the most iconic livery for Alaskan. It is the Mortal Love livery on their 737-900ER, and I think it's an outstanding livery. Very nice. It, this, this different shades of colors. Beautiful. We got the Eskimo once again on the tail. It says more to love along the side of the aircraft, you know, more to love. The different blending of colors and the shades are very nice. I really like it. Blue split scimitar wingtips as well, which is another cool thing. Oh, also Taxiway was helping with these split scimitars. He actually changed this. Before, I'll show you what this was like. Oh my god. So before, this was like this. And I could tell where, where Taxiway was coming from. He was like, eh, that looks a little too blocky and he decided to put it there. And I agree with him, that looks a lot better in my opinion, so yeah, that's there now. So thanks, Taxi. Now, back to the actual aircraft. Very nice. I'm, I tried my best with the fades of the different colours, I don't know how it went. It looks alright. It was, it was, yeah, meh. But the interior, once again, just like the other Alaskan Airlines 77, we just have lavatory, closet, galley, then just all the way back with the sky interior as well. And then we have, um... Uh, lavatories, three lavatories and a galley. So yeah, that's the Alaskan Mortal Love 737-900ER. I had no idea this airline existed until I looked up 737-900 liveries, and I love this livery in real life. I've said that about quite a few of the liveries already in this episode, but the I think it's pronounced XL. This is a beautiful livery, in my opinion. I just think the different shades of blue and green, similar to why I like the uh, new Alaskan livery. The different shades of blue and green and how they kind of blend and like the aqua, turquoise, all of those. I just think this looks awesome. Great livery in my opinion. Um, and I, it would be good for thumbnails. I, I swear, I bet you the thumbnail of this video is this aircraft. Unless it's the Mortal Love livery, but yeah. Mortal Love livery is a little cliche to do as a thumbnail. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is just a 737-900ER. Or XL. Very nice plane. Next up we have Lion Air, I think it's called, or just Lion. Very nice, once again, I was debating whether or not to have spaces between the lettering, but I decided that it would go too far, it would be about here if that was the case. That just didn't look right, it didn't look anything like the actual thing, so I decided to just keep it there. And yeah, so it says Boeing 737-900 and has the registration, as well as the Lion on the tail. 
Beautiful aircraft, very nice livery, very simple livery, and I like that about it. But yeah, there's no interior on any of these remaining ones, except for this one, which has the exact same interior as the other Alaskan ones, so there's no need to go into it. Here is the 737-900 for Alaskan. This is not got split similar, it's not got a stack on my antenna, nothing special about it. It's just a 737-900 in the older livery, which is, once again is a pretty good livery from Alaskan. I'm not too big a fan of it, but I do like a few aspects of it. I don't really, I'm not, I'm not, the big thing I don't really like is the color, the shade of green they use. I, okay. I just don't think that the shade of green is that nice. But, you know, it's old, it's an old fashioned livery and I like it, I like it. I like it. Let's see what, well, I mean, I kind of like it, yeah. That's a better way of putting it, really. But yeah, this is a, this is a good livery. <laughs> good enough livery. Um, and yeah, it's Alaskan 77900, yeah. I just contradicted myself about 450,000 times in that one little segment, but I don't care. Yeah, Alaskan 737900 livery. My favorite livery. I was doing that on purpose, I was just contradicting myself again. Okay, that's the last livery of this episode, guys. I'll see you in the outro. Alright, before I f begin this outro, I'd just like to say about the skin, do not ask. Just don't. There's no point. It it's the best skin I've ever seen in my life. Okay, so thank you guys for watching this episode of Cubic Wings. If you enjoyed, good. <laughs> thank you guys for watching this episode of Cubic Wings. Um, next episode is definitely not going to be a 737 because I decided I've been working on these 737s for way too long now. It's been over half a year and I just don't want to ever look at a 737 ever again in my entire life. I just genuinely don't. I'm sick of them. I need to do something different so I'm going to be switching over to the Airbus family and I'm going to be doing the A320 for the next episode. And then, you know, A321, A319, A318 and then I'll probably be sick of those and go to something else such as the 747 which... Surprise! You saw nothing.